Welcome to Chronicles of an RT Autism Mom. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and follow me on all other social media. Also, don't forget to hit that bell and press all so that you know of all my upcoming videos. Today is being black and autistic and dealing with law enforcement. Information from research by Joy F. Johnson, M.E.D., M.S., a black woman on the autism spectrum. One in five teens with autism will be stopped and questioned by police by age 21. And actually autistic adults are five times more likely to be jailed than their neurotypical peers. Black men and boys are almost three times more likely than white men and boys to be killed by police. Black girls and women are almost two times more likely than white women and girls to be killed by police. If you have a black and autistic child, you must prepare them for interaction with law enforcement within their social skill set. Here are some tips. You should plan and practice disclosure slash safety techniques that can include but should not be limited to the tips that I'm going to give you during this video. It is a sad fact in today's world that many law enforcement are not properly trained to deal with youth or young adults on the autism spectrum. This is even truer for those who are black and autistic. For this reason, it is important for parents and caregivers to help our youth and young adults be prepared to deal with law enforcement. It is important to anticipate when law enforcement interaction may happen. And this is going to differ if you have a school-aged child versus a young adult on the spectrum. So the instructions and the types of anticipations will vary depending on the age. In this current climate that includes police brutality, it is often difficult to anticipate when or where police interaction may happen. For this reason, it's important for us to make sure that our children are prepared in all instances for their own safety as well as the safety of those around them. Develop and practice an individual specific vocal disclosure plan. It's important to make sure that your child or young adult is able to answer basic questions if asked by law enforcement. I have found that teaching them information by route sometimes is the best way to make them memorize the information such as answering their name, their address, and giving out an emergency number if necessary. But you may find that other methods help to make them remember this information just as easily. Teach them to always keep their hands visible and to drop any objects in their hands. It is really important that we help our kids and young adults to make sure that their hands are visible if they're dealing with law enforcement and that they do not have anything in their hands nor do they put their hands in, the, in their pockets. Um, so this is a good practice to practice with them so that if they do have an encounter with law enforcement, this is not something that becomes a problem as the law enforcement does not know that they're dealing with an individual who is on the autism spectrum. Practice when and how to obtain permission or signal your intention before reaching, 
in their pockets, bag, or glove compartments of vehicles. It's an important instruction to have them practice this because as we know many times people unfortunately can get shot from moving too fast and it's just a reality that we don't want to see one of our kids sitting on the side of the road because they didn't wait and give information to the police officers um, once they had permission. Practice when and how to direct police on where their ID and or handout card is located. And this is a preferred method over reaching into their own pockets for safety reasons. Um, as I discussed before, um, or if they're in some type of tactical defense. Some of our youth and um, young adults may have meta lurk bracelets that they wear that say that they have autism or they may have some, some type of handout card. But it's really important to have something on their person that does identify um, that as well as having a state issued ID if they're over the age of 16. Develop and practice how to use a handout card that discloses their diagnosis, triggers, tactile aversions and behaviors, stemming. And this is really important if you have a child who is non-vocal or if they're vocal but they're one of those ones who is selectively mute or decides when and where they want to talk. Um, you know, this is an example of one of the things, you know, have a, have a card that identifies that they're, that they have autism and talk, talks about some of the things that they may or may not, um, do. And this is definitely helpful if they are, um, in a situation with law enforcement. Our kids, even if they are non-vocal, can understand how to do things like this, such as, you know, giving a card. So it's an important skill to teach them. Practice when and how to request to call an advocacy organization or personal advocate, relative, or friend. Directions with contact information should be on any type of handout that they may have. It's important for us to make sure that our kids and our young adults have this information available on them. This would be an anxious situation for them, but we want to make sure that they know to either have the information to give to the officers so that someone can call or that they can make that call themselves. It's important and it's part of their rights. Develop and practice self-calming and coping strategies. It's important for our kids and young adults to be able to try to calm themselves and cope in situations with law enforcement. Some of the calming and coping strategies are things that you can work with behavior therapists and adaptive behavior therapists in helping them to be able to cope with situations if they are encountered with law enforcement so it does not become a meltdown situation for them.
prepare them that they may be touched and equip them with coping strategies, ways of calming and self-talking and breathing techniques to utilize if things like this occur. As we know, if our children or young adults are in a situation with police, there is a possibility that they may be patted down. And we have to make sure that they're equipped so that they don't freak out and that they're able to be calm in the situation because, again, police officers are not always aware that they're dealing with someone with autism when they're going through the process of doing a search or a pat down. Teach them not to run. Many of our kids are runners and it's really important that we teach them that if they are in a situation with law enforcement that they do not run. That if the officer says stop, they stop. That they do not run. It's really, really important and it's something that we do have to practice with them, especially if we have someone on the spectrum who is a runner. And it's it could be life or death. So teach them not to run. Teach them not to touch a police officer's dog. The police officer's dog is not a pet. The police officer's dog is also a police officer. So it's important that we teach our children and young adults that police dogs are not pets and should not be touched like they would touch a dog of a friend or service dog if they have one. Teach them not to touch a police officer's weapon or person. This is probably the most important of all of the things that I've talked about in this. It's important that they don't touch the officers. Many of our kids and young adults are very friendly and they may want to touch the officer, but in situations like this, we don't want them to touch them and we definitely don't want them to touch the weapon. So it's important that they're taught not to walk towards the officer to touch his person or to touch his weapon. This is some of the tips and I hope you guys um, enjoy this information. Please leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know how you like this video on being autistic and black and dealing with law enforcement. Thanks guys for watching. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and blessings from the west side, y'all.